Today, the president created Task Force Yolanda to be headed by Energy Secretary Jerico Petilia. Its mandate, take charge of recovery and re rebuilding in areas devastated by Typhoon Yolanda. It comes in time with DILG Secretary Marojas declaring that the worst is over. The situation in the affected areas have stabilized and life for the survivors is moving towards normalcy. And joining us tonight on the line is Energy Secretary Jerico Petilia, the head of the Task Force Yolanda. Good evening, sir, and welcome to News Live. Good evening, Robert. Sir, can you just tell us what the overall situation is in the areas hit by Typhoon Yolanda, and is the worst over? Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult to define what worst is because um, you don't know if it's, uh, in, it's Typhoon hitting you and uh, and uh, basically threatening your life. That that's actually worse, or is it that? days to come when you have to recover from rubble, basically, because that's how I describe it. Can we say um, it has stabilized um, as announced by Secretary Rojas? It, it, has, it, uh, it has had stabilized. In fact, I would say it has stabilized a few, a few days back. Uh, you can see trading going on now because that's, that's basically a sign of, uh, of uh, well, I wouldn't say full recovery, but it's just part of the recovery. Uh, when you have the, uh, the the talipapa, when you have the market opening, that's uh, that's a good sign. Banks are opening as well, because it's kind of difficult to actually um, do business without uh, without the bank. But I guess a big leap, a big leap really towards uh, towards what what people would feel as normalcy or moving towards normalcy is when power is back, mm -hmm. and that that is my job. Mm -hmm. So now, as, as head of the task force, Yolanda, what is your exact mandate from the president? What needs to be done? Um, we have experts within the cabinet uh, ranks, okay? We have Secretary Singh, you know, who's in charge of uh, housing and relocation. We have uh, Secretary Baldos for, for jobs. We have uh, Secretary Alcala for, for livelihood on agriculture, just about everything. And then we still have Secretary Dinky for relief, continu continuing relief operations. There's a whole lot of activities going on towards the rehab. And uh, my role is simply to put them together so that they'll move in one direction. So far, sir, how is the planning, um, how is it coming out well, with, with all these agencies are working with you? Uh, the planning is... Um, the planning is, uh, well, it's challenging. Not because people don't know what they're doing. It's because the magnitude of the problem and the, and the task itself is, uh, is, uh, is huge. It's huge and uh, sometimes you feel that you don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. But there is a solution. It simply needs to be put in place and we need to put deadlines mm -hmm. on ourselves. Now, sir, what are the priorities in the recovery and rehabilitation? We know power is a major concern. When will this be fully restored in Leyte and Eastern Samar? Um, I've set a deadline of December 24, uh, for in Visayas. And as we speak right now, down Bantayan in, uh, in Cebu and uh, uh, northern Cebu, they have power already. Ormok has been, has been uh, energized this afternoon. Bohol. Bohol will be, the entire province of Bohol will, will have power by tomorrow. Um, we're moving, but if you look at the Eastern Visayas area, it's really a challenge. That's why they're going to come last on December 24th. Now, sir, when it comes to infrastructures, which will be rebuilt immediately? I guess the, the most important thing right now is um, to put people back in their homes. Okay, we, you, you really don't want prolonged uh, stay in evacuation centers, okay? Not only is it, uh, to some extent, it's, it's an unhealthy social life, but also it's expensive because you have to feed them. Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing that we have to do is make sure that people who can actually rebuild their homes can rebuild their homes because all of them are really gearing up towards going back to their homes. You, you know, you can put a relocation site, you can ask them to relocate, you can give them an option, but if they have an option, they'd rather go back to their old home fix them. And sir, because of that, that's what we're trying to assist them on doing. Sir, but we know it's going to take some time to rebu rebuild these permanent homes um, for those who survived Typhoon Yolanda. Now, will there be um, temporary shelters um, built 
for them in these areas? There are already temporary shelters being built. built some, some of them are tents. But uh, you'll also be surprised because I myself am a victim. Okay, I have, I have two houses, uh, well, two apartments which were, uh, uh, the rooftops were actually blown out. Okay, so uh, my mother is, um, is living in the municipal hall. Mm -hmm. My brother is living in a makeshift uh, provincial headquarters. He's the governor of uh, Leyte. So we'll, we're big things ourselves and we've seen our neighborhood. We've seen other provinces as well. Uh, like uh, Samar. And the thing is, most of the structures of the houses, although we're all victims, they're actually intact except that they don't have a roof. Mm -hmm. And that the furniture inside were scrambled, like you put them into a washing machine. But overall, okay, majority of the houses that I've actually seen actually simply roofing. And that's what we're going to focus on, roofing Sir, for the houses that can be rebuilt. Sir, you, you, also, you mentioned that you were a victim and um, also you, you do come from late. Did you experience this before or, or this, this kind of experience um, through Typhoon Yolanda? Is this a first of its kind? I think it's a first of its kind in the history of humankind. I mean, uh, there has never been a uh, storm or a typhoon as strong as this one. And when people ask, did we prepare enough? All I can say is that during my time when I was a governor for about nine years, we always had typhoons numbering about five a year. Uh, we've always prepared ourselves. If you look at the statistics, Leyte has had the least number of casualties all these years. But the thing is, you can never really prepare enough for type, a super typhoon like this one. So how do you manage your time coping also being a victim yourself and now being tasked um, on um, this task force Yolanda to rebuild and, re um, and recover um, in these areas? Well, um, my, my task really was on the first uh, few days of the after the typhoon. Okay, my, you know, if, if you're a relative, for example, because I wasn't there during the typhoon, okay, um, the first thing I did without any communication was actually go back to Leyte every way, every means I can. I was able to go back there and basically take care of the family, make sure they're all right, okay. How is make your family, sure that the how, how are they coping? The how, family's how are you? good. Mm -hmm. The family's good. They're, they're all fighters. Uh, uh, they're public officials, and it's the most difficult thing to do is to extract them out of their towns and out of the province. Mm -hmm. They want to stay there. Uh, they want to rebuild, help rebuild, and that's why it, it's kind of tough to actually extract them out of, of Leyte. But saying that, um, I just wanted to make sure that the local government in Leyte was functioning. Because the first thing that you want to make sure is that you have a government functioning uh, to handle all these challenges. National government can come in and help, but it's a local government which will be the key to the rehab of each town and each province. So I've seen that the first four days I was there, okay, observing what was going on, helping out. And I'm comfortable that the provincial government right now and the municipal government of most towns in Leyte, uh, even in Samar, are functioning. And I'm slowly trying to detach myself from the rehab program of specific areas in my hometown and my home province. So now going back to infrastructure rebuilding, there were many classrooms destroyed and also hospitals. Now, will this be a priority so that children can go back to school and also with the hospitals so that they can attend to our people in these areas? Uh, there are many priorities when doing a rehab because all of them are actually priorities. But I think the first priority is for those who can rebuild their homes in a few days' time. I'm not talking about months, okay? Mm -hmm. What do you need? We're now asking them, what do you need okay, from us? Okay, where can we help? Okay, but, and is it something that we can afford? Okay, to what extent can we help? That, that these are questions we need to answer. And once they're answered, implement them right away. Again, the last thing we want is get bogged down on planning. Mm -hmm. What I want to do now is basically go out there and actually implement and execute whatever the, the plans we have, uh, we are going to present to the president. So are there enough funds to do this? Um, do we have a ballpark big, figure and what kind of funds we're talking about? Big, big question. 
big, big question. Funding is always a uh, problem. When departments are presented with, uh, were asked to present the budget for the rehab, you know, it's, it's, it's more like a wish list mm -hmm. rather than, than a practical uh, budget that can be funded. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's huge. Uh, honestly, it's something that, uh, way, that is way beyond the means of the government, and that's why we're trying to scale it down to what we can afford and what we can implement right away rather than focus on budgets that we can't really implement. So now looking at agriculture, how big was the damage and how can we help now the farmers to get back on their feet and start planting again? Uh, from the last estimate we had, the uh, agriculture, agricultural damage, and this is our estimate, uh, was around 10 billion pesos. Sir, and now, sir, a final word. What are the next steps? Uh, what what we expect in the next coming days? Next coming days is basically okay. Um, we're going to present something to the president on on uh, on Tuesday, mm -hmm. okay, and meet on Wednesday at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, we we have to come up with a plan. It's not going to be perfect. At, uh, nobody expected this uh, huge magnitude of a of a typhoon. We will come up with a plan, okay? It will not be perfect. It will not be the most efficient plan that we have. But the most important thing is timing. And this is what we want to do now. Implement right away and start moving. Okay, on that note, thank you very much, Secretary Jerico Petilio. We hope to have you again to inform our people on your plans for the recovery of areas devastated by Typhoon Yolanda. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Robert.